Good evening, dear colleague. Today I will speak about dynamic sonography of quadriceps tendon. I hope you'll enjoy the topic. This is for the first time to be reported in literature about quadriceps tendon through impingement to the quadriceps tendon. My name is Mohamed Dogbeg. I'm a senior consultant in physical medicine, rheumatology, and rehabilitation, interventional physiotherapist in Kuwait PMR Hospital. I would like to thank Dr. Jin Li Pen, giving me the chance to speak about the day topic. Musculoskeletal ultrasound has advantages oh. over MRI and CT because it is a dynamic test that permits visualization of structures as they move through the range of motion that can be de detect subtle lesions missed by static modalities. We know that clearly MRI and CT are static modalities. Here is an extensor mechanism which is composed from the quadriceps tendon including the patella and the patellar tendon. And this is the position of the, our probe during our examination. In long sagittal sec section, we have a suprapatellar soft tissue which includes the suprapatellar fat bed, prefemoral fat bed, suprapatellar persa, articularis genu muscles, Infrapatellar fat bed body with the bursa deep and superficial bursa. This is how it looks the suprapatellar soft tissue. This is the suprapatellar fat bed and the prefemoral fat bed. And superior to the prefemoral fat bed is the suprapatellar bursa and the articularis genu muscles. You can see here that the soft tissues, which is the suprapatellar fat bed, has no encroachment in, during extension over uh, again the patella or the bony cortex of the femur. Uh, this is a anatomical cross cryosectional anatomy of the quadriceps tendon, prefemoral fat bed, suprapatellar fat bed and prefemoral bed bed and suprapatellar bursa, and the quadriceps tendon and patellar tendon, the extensor mechanism. And this is the MRI of the knee extensor mechanism. You can see the supratrochlear or suprapatellar fat bed and suprapatellar fat bed, this small triangle. And this is a quadriceps tendon of the three components of the quadriceps tendon. This is how we do a standard points of measurements of the goniometry, extension and inflection. And this is how we apply the goniometer during our examination while using dynamic study of the quadriceps tendon. And we will calculate the painful range of motion during extension and flexion in this patient. Definitely biomechanics and patellofemoral compression force will help us how flexion can increase the compressive force in the patellofemoral joint. You can see here in the squatting it is seven times the body weight, the compressive force, comparing to walking. And this, notice that the resultant force, which is the red arrow vector, increases the knee flex during the flexion, and the line of pull from the quadriceps and patellar tendon causes more compressive force. Quadriceps tendon impingement in the literature, we can find that we have few literatures about the quadriceps tendon impingement, one uh, about quadriceps tendon fat bed impingement syndrome, and it is an MRI finding. Quadriceps tendon impingement from ephemeral interference screw and the patellar clunk syndrome, a complication of posterior stabilized knee arthroplasty. In quadriceps fat bed impingement syndrome MRI finding, we can see that there is a signal changes in the suprapatellar fat bed, but it doesn't explain how this mass effect by the suprapatellar fat bed is causing compression to the quadriceps tendon, and how this happens, what is the underlying cause of these changes in the suprapatellar fat bed and the quadriceps tendon. The other case reported in the literature, which is quadriceps tendon impingement from ephemeral interface interference screw. You can see the screw here compressing the suprapatellar fat bed, prefemoral fat bed, and the quadriceps tendon. The other one is the formation of fibrous nodule 
developed in the three patients after posterior knee stabilized. We prescribed here uh, for the first time new technique uh, to diagnose by dynamic sonography the quadriceps tendon impingement published in pain medicine in PubMed. The case history, 63 year old female was referred to musculoskeletal ultrasound unit for chronic right anterior knee pain. Three years duration, increasing past four months. The pain was worse during daily activities and relieved by less. She denied history of major trauma fracture infection. Had type two diabetes mellitus for seven years and hypertension for 12 years controlled by medication. His examination shows Swelling and tenderness as a quadriceps tendon just one inch above the upper pole of the patella. Knee range of motion were as follows. Flexion 110 degree, painful beyond 30 degree, and extension was full but painful during the last 10 degree. Here standing showing a grade 3 calligram classification in the right knee, grade 2 in left knee. And in the lateral position, we can see here a supratracheal ossify. This supratracheal has an has a direction, a horizontal direction, and we can see the soft tissue of the quadriceps tendon. So we expect from the, the prescription of pain of the patient that during flexion, this ossify is causing compression over the quadriceps tendon, causing true quadriceps tendon impingement. So we can detect this by ultrasound. This is an extension, static panoramic view. This is a patella and this is a quadriceps tendon. And we can see here, this is a femur and this is supratrochlear osteophytes in extension. But in flexion, definitely now, this is a femoral condyle and this is an anterior so uh, supratrochlear osteophytes. And we can see the quadriceps tendon here is edematous swollen compared to the distal and proximal part and this is during flexion we can see that this osteophyte is compressing the quadriceps tendon during flexion here is a dynamic ultrasound you can see the osteophyte now in extension it goes down but in flexion it compresses the quadriceps tendon so this osteophyte anterior supratrochlear ossophytes from the femoral condyle is compressing the quadriceps tendon during flexion. This is what causes pain during the flexion. This is osteophyte causing tenting of quadriceps, producing pain under the transducer with positive sonopalpation. So this is confirmed our expectation and you can visualize easily how it looks during dynamic examination. So this is an extension. You can see that the osophyte is not in contact with the quadriceps tendon. This is beyond 30 degree flexion. You can see the anterior osteophyte compressing the quadriceps tendon. And this is the insert shows this osteophyte compressing here the quadriceps tendon. Ultrasound guided rehabilitation management. She was initially treated with non steroidal drugs, improved partially afterwards, treated with physical therapy, heat tense, during which could not perform cycling exercise because it causes pain. This explains how the anterior suffice compresses the quadriceps tendon causing the pain. Accordingly, ultrasound imaging was carried out and it showed mild synovitis fusion suprapatellar pressure, which, while sonopalpation revealed the painful ossophytes which correspond to the site of tenderness on physical examination. Dynamic ultrasound imaging shows show with the impingement of the anterior osteophytes on the quadriceps tendon, which is slightly swollen. Ultrasound guided rehabilitation management. The patient was advised to stop cycling and perform only short arc from serratic reflection to full extension and the isometric exercise as home program. Thereafter, the patient felt better. In the relevant literature, quadriceps impingement has been reported. However, it is either used to refer to the impingement of the fat bed or the impingement on the tendon after surgery, almost always shown by magnetic resonance MRI. To our knowledge, quadriceps tendon impingement due to an estophytes illustrates substantially by dynamic ultrasound imaging has not been reported until now. Likewise, we highlight the convenience of ultrasound, especially to shed light and to better understanding the complex symptoms of patients with dynamic assessment. 
In conclusion, dynamic arthroscopy is a powerful diagnostic tool in the hand of physiatrists and rheumatologists in understanding the biomechanics and the pathophysiology of wide varieties of soft tissue, muscle, tendon, ligaments, nerves, fascia, piercy, and fat beds, lesions, injuries, or pathologies caused by encroachment or impingement of these soft tissue over or between hard tissue, bone, cartilage, fibrous bands, tough ligaments, and hardware so it can improve their management and guide their rehabilitation and prevention.